So I think I saw a lot in the chat, not just tonight, but also last night, where a lot of people were struggling with instantaneous values, how to recognize them, what's the difference, how to convert back and forth. So remember, only in power electronics are we going to deal with instantaneous values, right? Everything outside of power electronics is just going to be what? It's going to be RMS voltage. So everything we've been dealing with up until now has been RMS voltage. So who can tell me what does RMS stand for? And what's another name for RMS? What does RMS stand for? Yeah, root mean square, right? Really easy. RMS stands for root mean square. What's another name for RMS? What's another name that describes this value? Ooh, um, effective. Yeah, good job, Roberto. This is also known as the effective value. These words are interchangeable. Root mean square and effective. Why is RMS useful to quantify AC voltage or current? Why do we use it? Why do we use it? Average of voltage is zero. Great job, Jeff. Jeffy. So we'll say because the average value is zero. We're going to look at that too on the next side. What else? DC equivalent from George and Nordy and a few others. Great. So we'll say two DC equivalent. 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 <laughs> um, what else? How fast does our AC power supply change values? From the peak value to the negative value, back to the peak value, down to the negative value. How fast is this changing? 60 hertz, okay. So our, if our frequency is 60 hertz, how fast are we completing each cycle? How do we find period? So from here, we'll say all the way to about here, we could call that one period, right? T equals what? T equals one over frequency, right? What's one over 60 hertz? Let's see, 0 0.0 or 0 0.0167 seconds. Thank you, Andy and Manila. Yeah, in other words, our AC sine wave for a 60 hertz system is gonna go from zero to the peak voltage, back to zero, to the negative peak voltage in 0 0.0167 seconds. And this T actually needs to be shifted slightly over here. There we go. So if we had a meter that was capable of reading voltage in real time, what would happen if we use that meter to register or to measure the instantaneous voltage, right? The voltage along this graph, what would, what would our meter read? What would our meter read? I'm gonna say AC voltage changes fast. In other words, if I had a, yeah, it would constantly change. Exactly, Andrew. If I put a meter to measure the voltage in my receptacle and that meter was able to register and measure and show me the exact instantaneous voltage, think about how fast those numbers would be changing on that meter. It'd be, it'd be all the way up to the peak, all the way back down to zero, all the way down to the negative peak, all the way back to zero in the span of not even one second, not even in a tenth of a second, right? So the root mean square or the effective measurement it's helpful to know uh, what that value is when it's not changing with time. And when we say the, date, the DC equivalent, what that means if I have a, an RMS voltage, that same voltage in DC will draw the same amount of current from the same load. So all of our measurements and calculations from DC to AC, we can swap back and forth, right? If I have a 50 ohm, for example, if I've got, say we wanna find what's the current drawn by I equals to V over Z, 120 volts RMS, we'll say a 10 ohm resistor. That's gonna be what? That's gonna be 12 amps, right? Well, DC equivalent means that if I wanted to measure the amount of current drawn by 120 volt DC power supply from that same 10 ohm resistor, we're gonna draw the same 12 amps. So that's what we mean by the DC equivalent. 
All right, what are some of the examples of common RMS voltage values? What are some common RMS voltage values that we've maybe worked with or seen on paper? Yeah, 120, let's go in order. How about we'll say 120, 208, 277, 240. Yeah, pretty much all the values we've been working with up until this point are, are we've, we've been working with RMS values this whole time. 4160, what, 13.8 kV, maybe 15 kV, uh, 69 kV, 230 kV, right? Five, 525 kV, yep, exactly. So just about all of the voltages we've been working with up to now have all been RMS values. So if we've been working with RMS values and we need to know the peak value, how do we convert back and forth? How do we calculate V peak? So before, personally, I typically used the notation V peak because number one, VP looks like V phase. So I usually say V peak or V PK, but it's helpful to know that your handbook uses the notation of what? Your handbook uses VM, right? For maximum value. So if you see VM, that stands for maximum value. That's your peak value. So how do I convert? We just multiply by the square root of two, right? Yeah, you got it. Real easy. So the square root of two times my RMS value is gonna get the maximum value, also known as the peak value. What about the peak to peak value? If the max value is from here to here, and my negative max value is the same amount but in the negative direction, how do I calculate from the positive peak all the way down to the negative peak? What do I do? Yeah, just multiply the peak by two. So I can say my peak to peak voltage is gonna be two times the maximum value, right? If this is positive VM and this is negative VM, right? Two times VN gives us that whole value from top to bottom. It's helpful to look at, let's see, is the orange wrong RMS equals, ooh, yeah, thank you. Let's see, this should, yeah, go ahead. Who caught that? Thank you, Brian. I'm gonna use red, so the same color. Yeah, RMS is always gonna be the smaller value. So this should be divided by the square root of two. Thank you for pointing that out. I think um, we changed all the subscripts to match the handbook and I think that, that got in the way. All right, <clears throat> what about, what is instantaneous voltage or instantaneous current? What is instantaneous voltage and instantaneous current? That's gonna be the, the actual value at a very specific point in time, right? In other words, if I said, what is, if we're looking at this instantaneous voltage graph, and let's just go ahead and clear this up a little bit. Our instantaneous function is V of T equals the peak voltage times the sine function of omega T. That's this curve right here, right? If I plug in a specific value for T and evaluate that sine function, that's gonna give me the actual voltage, right, on the Y axis at that specific time. For example, say if I plugged in a value of this here at T, whatever this value is right here on my Y axis is what V of T would be equal to at this point in time. So we can think of the instantaneous voltage or current as number one, right? What I like to call an instantaneous function. So V of T times our peak voltage times the sine function at omega T. And we can use this function to evaluate, hey, what's the actual voltage at a very specific or an, at an exact moment in time? See that? So let's look at this graph really quick and point out a few things. What is the square root of two equal? What's the square root of two? It's about slightly more than half, right? 0 0.707, yep. So whatever your peak value is, right? Your RMS is gonna be about 0 0.707. 
So it's going to be more than half. So this orange line just represents that constant RMS or that, uh oh, is it 1.4? I thought so. Let's see. Square root of two. Ah, it is 1.4. 1. 1. I think that's what, that's one over one over two, right? That's what I get for looking at the chat without doing the calculator. So your, your RMS value is going to be divided by 1.414. So it's gonna be 0 0.707 of your peak value. So this flat horizontal line represents your constant effective or root mean square value. The peak of that instantaneous function is gonna be your maximum or your peak value. And the instantaneous function that sine function is going to be your instantaneous value.